Fellas, we have got some spicy mods for this episode. So much is focused around stasis, grenade launchers, there's also a bit of arc and void that splashed into that. But what's interesting is the boost system that Bungie has added that ties into our potion crafting. Think of these as a means of boosting our artifact mods even further, which brings us to today's video. We're gonna be breaking down these artifact mods. We're gonna be explaining how each of the boosts works and then go over some of the cool combinations and exotics that we have found synergize the best and also discuss some exotics that unfortunately didn't synergize. Now, for those unaware, we have an entire entire guide already going over how Revenant works, including the potion crafting in great detail. But essentially, there are two types of potions. You have your volatile tonics and your enriching tonics, which for artifact mods, you're going to want to invest in volatile tonics. Now, when crafting these potions with Ido in the last city, the more you craft, the better the potions you unlock. For example, you'll start out with this like green diluted tonic of protecting frost, which can boost things like wind chill. Then after crafting six of these, you unlock the blue potent tonic of protecting frost, which will now boost the armor of Aramis artifact. Then when you craft four blue ones, you unlock the purple refined tonic of protecting frost, which will now boost both of those artifact mods. And that's essentially how all the other tonics work here. But again, check out our full guide, guys, if you're looking for a more detailed explanation. That's just like a TLDR version on the artifact side. Now we're gonna start with column one. These are our anti-champion mods. We have things like anti-champion shotguns, overload breach loaded grenade launchers. These definitely stand out as they not only stun champions, but of course they overcharge our weapons, making them do more damage. Now, a few things to note here is that there are a few exotic weapons that are not working with some of the anti-champion artifact mods. For instance, Wicked Implement is not working with anti-barrier scout. We also have Conditional Finality, which is not working with anti-barrier shotgun, despite it being a shotgun. Now, Bungie actually revealed this is by design due to them being stasis weapons and being able to slow targets. Essentially, what they're trying to say is, is that they don't want one weapon having the ability to counter all champion types. Now, normally, I understand the logic behind it, but personally, I don't really think it's that big of a deal considering we literally have other the weapons, most notably Critical Anomaly, which is the Salvation's Edge Raid Sniper Rifle. In last season, you can get Anti-Barrier Sniper Rifle, which meant the Chill Clip version of this weapon had the ability to literally counter all three champions. But it seems Bungie wants to move away from that. Now let's get into our second column artifact mods. First up, we have one with Frost, which reads that while Frost armor is active, Stasis weapons gain increased reload speed and stability. Stasis swords gain increased guard resistance. And as far as the reload speed increase goes, we tested this with the Lanthanium, which takes roughly 106 frames to reload. Then with one with Frost active, it took 100 frames. So a slight increase there in reload speed. It also doesn't seem to matter how many stacks of Frost armor you have. The speed was the same across all stacks, all the way up to max. Now as for the stability bump, according to Destiny data, this should be about plus 15 stability, which is pretty nice, especially inside of PvP. And as far as the guard resistance for Stasis of Swords, again, I'm not really sure here on the exact percentage but it did feel like my guard was able to tank a bit more against Carl. Next, we have Killing Breeze, where Rapid Weapon Final Blows grants you a bonus to mobility. Now, Weapon Final Blows with the Dark Ether Reaper Origin trait count as more than one. Now, in a normal weapon, this takes three rapid kills to proc. You'll then see the Killing Breeze buff on your screen. This will last for about five seconds, and it can be refreshed by getting a kill. Then, with a weapon that has the Dark Ether Origin trait, it will proc in just one kill, which is really nice. Now, for PvE, I probably wouldn't recommend in this, all you're really going to be getting here is the ability to walk and stray faster, jump higher, and I guess if you're on a hunter, it does reduce your class ability cooldown, but again, this only lasts for about five seconds, unless, of course, you keep getting kills. But for my PvP players, yeah, this might be something worth running, and matter of fact, as we get into next week past the dungeon, we'll be looking at a lot of things that overlap into PvP, this mod included. Now, the next artifact mod is Enhanced Ether Generator. This is where your Dark Ether Reaper Origin trait has a chance to spawn an extra Dark Ether Charge. Also, weapons with this Origin trait are overcharged when that modifier is active. Now, how this Origin trait works is after about four kills, or at least what was most consistent for me here was four kills. It will spawn a dark ether charge in the air, which can be either walked up to or shot to partially overflow your magazine. Now, I will say I have had moments where it procced in just two kills, but something to keep in mind. Now, what this does for, say, something like Zuvia, which is the hand cannon with a base mag of eight, it will overflow the magazine up to 12. But when you have enhanced ether generator active, you'll get your kills and you'll see two dark ether charges spawn. And the cool thing here is that shooting just one 
gun will overflow your mag more, bringing our hand cannon up to 15 shots overflow. You'll then have that other charge floating around for a few seconds. So if you wanted to sit there and continue blowing your load, you can then shoot the second charge to overflow your mag again. I've seen a few comments from folks saying they aren't a huge fan of these weapons, but I will say that the origin trait on them is very strong. Next, we have Fell the Revenants, where you deal increased damage to Scorn, and wearing Shade Stalker armor increases the bonus damage. Now, with no Shade Stalker armor, again, this is our seasonal armor, this mod by itself is a 3% increase in damage. You can see it here taking our crit from 13,419 to 13,821. Now, with one piece of armor, this bumps us up to 7%. With two pieces of armor, this bumps us up to 9%. Three pieces of armor, 12%, and then four pieces of armor is a whopping 15% increase in damage. Now, unfortunately, you cannot wear this armor as ornaments. You need to be wearing the actual armor itself. And I don't know about you guys, I keep getting terrible stat rolls for this thing. Even when rolling my tonics for them, the stat rolls are abysmal. I want to use armor. This is actually armor worth using because of Fell the Revenant. And hopefully here soon, we can start securing better stat rolls. Now, lastly, in column two, we have Rapid Impacts, which reads that dealing damage with the grenade launcher temporarily increases the reload speed of grenade launchers. Now, how this works is that each hit with the GL will give you one stack of rapid impacts. However, if you direct impact an enemy, this is almost always going to give you two stacks at a time. Meaning with just three hits, you can reach that max stack of five. And depending on how many targets that you hit with one shot, theoretically, you can hit max stacks off of that one shot. Another neat thing about this is that double fire grenade launchers, if you direct impact a target, it's going to instantly grant you times four. And that's because you're essentially shooting two grenade launcher shots at once. On top of that, wave frame grenade launchers or even aerial denial GLs can also easily get stacks very fast as they hit multiple targets at once. Now, as far as Atlantineum, the direct impact spike will keep counting as multiple hits, which will allow you to go from one to five stacks in just a few seconds. Now, what does the reload speed increase look like? We tested this on Salvager Salvo. We had a base of 109 frames to reload. At times two, it dropped to 107, times four, 102, and times five, 96 frames. Now, if you're using a stasis grenade launcher, this can also stack with the reload increase that one with frost gifts. We tested this with Liturgy here, and it takes 121 frames at base to reload, but at times five, with rapid impacts, this drops us down to 105 frames. Then at times five impacts and one with frost, it drops us to 99 frames. I know that's not really giving you a lot of information because you're like, Cross, I don't really care about frames. Give me milliseconds. Frames is just how we calculate things. The main thing is just to show what synergizes and what doesn't. And these things do in fact stack. For my folks that are rocking grenade launchers, these mod choices are a no brainer. Now we're on to con three. First up, we have wind chill. This reads that rapid stasis weapon precision hits grant you a stack of frost arm. Rapid precision hits from weapons with dark ether reaper origin traits grants you more stacks of frost armor. Now this takes about 30% of your magazine plus one extra shot to proc. For example, a 120 round per minute hand cannon takes three shots to proc. A 600 round per minute SMG took nine shots. A 720 auto rifle took 16 shots. And as you would expect, using a stasis weapon with dark ether reaper origin traits will grant you two stacks on every proc. Now considering how potent stasis is this season and how many good stasis weapons we have, this is an excellent artifact mod to run. You can easily get stacks of frost armor as long as you're accurate. Now the boost for this artifact mod states the following. Dealing stasis weapon damage to slow targets targets has a chance to spawn a stasis shard. Now for this, it seems to take around four shots with a 120 round per minute hand cannon and around eight shots with a 600 round per minute SMG and around 15 shots with a 720 round per minute auto rifle. Now the cool thing is though, is that you could double up by landing crits. For example, if you're using a hand cannon, if I slow a target, and then land three crits with it. It will directly give me one stack of frost armor, but then landing one more shot will spawn the stasis crystal, which then gives me another stack of frost armor since I have Grim Harvest equipped on Hunter. Next up, we have Crystalline Converter. Gather stasis shards to gain stacks of Crystalline Converter. Your next powered stasis melee hit creates stasis crystals equal to the number of stacks that you have. Now, when you have this artifact mod equipped, you'll see a meter on your HUD with three sections, indicating how many stacks of Crystalline Converter that you have. Now, the scaling here is a bit weird. To get the first bar filled up, you need to collect eight stasis shards. Then from there, it gets significantly easier. For instance, the second bar simply requires four more stasis shards. And then the third bar requires only three. Now, when you get to that point, you can now use your power melee. And after it connects with the target, you're going to see three 
stasis pieces split off and create three large stasis crystals. Now, this is not an artifact mod that I think you need to base your entire build around. But if you are using something that does create a lot of stasis shards to begin with, on top of that, we have other artifact mods here that will provide stasis shards. And even the boost itself aids in this, as it reads that stasis weapon final blows after activating your class ability spawns a stasis shard. So despite the shard count here being very heavy, especially on the front end, with the right builds, you should be able to secure that no problem. Next, we got Total Carnage. This reads that after finishing a powerful combat, gain temporary damage resistance. While you have two or more Shade Stalker armor pieces equipped, after finishing a powerful combat, you gain increased temporary damage resistance and replenish health. Now let's start with the base effect because there's a lot of things happening here. With no Shade Stalker armor equipped, doing a finisher is going to give you resist times one, which is 10% damage resist inside a PvE, and this lasts for 10 seconds. Now, if you have two or more pieces of Shade Stalker armor equipped, performing a finisher will now give you resist times two. Now, this is a big jump. This gives us 25% damage resist in PvE, and this will last for 10 seconds. Now, anything more to two, at least from our testing, seems like it's a waste, as even with four pieces of armor, I was only getting times two. Now, wearing Shade Stalker armor will also replenish health, which looks to be somewhere around like 100 HP. It's a decent amount, guys. You'll see it taking me from red to almost fully healed, with just a little chunk of HP missing. Now, depending on your playstyle, this could be free extra damage resist for yourself. I think I think it's like Grandmaster Nightfalls, especially if you're running helmets like Fell Winners. And considering we have other armor, Artifact mods here that are going to lean into finishers. There's actually a play to be going for a full finishing build in this episode. Next up is Power from the Pain. Rapid final blows against weakened combatants grants you devour. Now, this was pretty straightforward. Just get three rapid kills against weakened enemies, and this will then grant you devour, which has a lot of benefits, including health regeneration, grenade regeneration. And as far as how to dip into this, there's a lot of ways you can do that. You got smoke bombs on Hunter, you got Echo of Undermining, you got Child of the Old Gods, etc. Now, this specifically feels like it was made to work with things like Felwinner's Helmet, for instance, as well as another artifact perk, Debilitating Wave, which we'll get into in just a moment. Now, for the boost on Power from the Pain, it reads that rapidly defeating Weakened Combatants spawns a Void Breach. And this works exactly the same here, guys. Just get three kills against weakened enemies, which will then grant you Devour and spawn that Void Breach. There's a lot of things in the game, guys, that can apply Weakened, whether it's Bloodline, the artifact mods here itself, which we're going to get into in just a moment, where Grenade Launchers can apply Weakened, or just leaning into our subclasses. This is a pretty easy one to take advantage of. Now, the final artifact mod in column three is Trace Evidence. This is essentially the arc equivalent of Power from the Pain. It reads that rapid precision hits or rapid final blows on targets affected by Jolt or Blind will generate Onic Traces. Now, this one's incredibly easy to proc since the enemies can be jolted or blinded. And you could even proc the Onic Trace just from your weapons if they have Volt Shot or even the new perk Jolting Feedback, which is fantastic. Now, in terms of the rapid final blows, you'll need to land three. And for the rapid precision hits, it seems even easier. Against Carl here, while jolted or blind, a single burst to the head with a pulse rifle would generate an Ionic Trace. And it was taken just two crits from a hand cannon. Now, Ionic Traces are great as they actually seek towards you. And they provide ability energy back for grenades, melee, and class ability. Now, there does seem to be about a five to six second cooldown, though, before you can spawn another Ionic Trace. So keep that in mind. Now, on to column four. Starting with Armor of Aramis. While Frost Armor is active, taking critical damage from combatants causes you to emit a freezing burst. Now, this one's a great defensive artifact mod, as once your health gets in the red, you'll emit this freezing burst, which can hit targets within a 12 meter radius from you. Now, its boost states that it increases the radius and strength of this freezing burst, which is about a 15 meter radius. Now, Frost Armor already gives you really good survivability, and this gives you even more when you get into those situations where you're about to die. Next up, we have Hell the Storm. This was actually one that was disabled for the contest mode of our dungeon. But this was actually a returning one for us from Season of the Wish. It reads that Shattering Stasis Crystals releases shards of ice that damages and slows targets. Now, upon shattering a Stasis Crystal, this is going to release five ice shards in this outward star pattern, with each of these shards dealing 2,413 damage, and I believe they apply 20 slow stacks each. We actually see it in this clip here, two shards hit Carl, and then I follow up with a Shuriken, which freezes him. Now, the boost for this reads that Shattering Frozen Targets in Stasis Crystals deals in 
increased damage. Now all these tests were done with Whisper of Fissures equipped. Normally, Coral will shatter for 19,312 damage, plus 1,207 damage for a total of 20,519. Now, the highest crystal shatter damage that I got was 8,447 plus 1,207 for a total of 9,654 damage. Now, when we combine this with Hell of Storm, Coral is actually shattering for a total of 23,234 damage, which is roughly an increase of 13.2%. Now, for the crystal shatter, that was dealing 12,066 in total, which is actually a 25% increase in damage. This is a fantastic artifact perk, guys. However, I do understand the complaints that back in Season of the Wish, it could do all of this without needing to boost it. But overall, I'm just glad to see it back, especially given how heavy stasis is this season. Next, we have Debilitating Wave. Finishers emit a damaging wave that matches the element of your currently equipped super. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. Just get a finisher, and then you'll see this wave appear that matches the element of your equipped super, which deals a maximum of 8,685 damage to enemies that are in front of it. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter which super you have equipped, as they all do the same thing. But the wave effect does change based on your super, which is pretty cool. Now, if you're using Facet of Defiance on Prismatic, however, it will matter which super you have equipped, as finishers with this create a detonation that either jolts, scorches, slows, severs, or makes targets volatile based on your equipped super. Now, if you boost the artifact, this will change based on your equipped super, as the wave will either blind, weaken, or slow while you have either an arc, void, or stasis super equipped. Now, a few things to note regarding the boost, at least during my testing, it was a bit inconsistent, as there were many instances of the wave looking like it was going to hit an enemy, but it would not apply any status effects. On top of that, it doesn't seem like you can double up with Facet of Defiance, as I wasn't getting two status effects to apply at the same time, which is a huge bummer. And as far as like finisher builds, I actually believe most people are going to prefer Facet of Defiance over the debilitating wave boost. So just a few things to keep in mind. Now, next we have a fan favorite artifact mod, Concussive Reload, formerly called Weak and Clear. Now, this reads that using a grenade launcher to damage a boss, damage a champion, or break a Caban shield weakens them. Now, it's the same as his previous iterations. This is going to apply weaken to the enemy, which is a 15% debuff. Now, for anyone wondering, this works with all grenade launchers, even the new exotic Elanthanium. Despite it being a primary grenade launcher, you can apply weaken here. Now, the boost for this perk reads that using grenade launchers to damage bosses, champions, or to break and ban shields automatically reloads stoke weapons. Now, this is something we used to have baked into the perk by default. But again, Bungie's really moving into this boost territory, obviously to bring value to their tonic system. They really want us interacting with the potion crafting, but this artifact mod has always been incredibly strong, which is why we only see it ever so often. And this just makes our grenade launcher builds shine even more this season. This is an absolute must-use artifact mod for anyone rocking grenade launchers. Now, last up in column four, we have Retinal Burn. Rapid arc weapon precision hits consume an armor charge to blind the targets. Now, this may not be the most potent artifact mod, but it is very easy to proc, as every weapon I tested only needed two precision hits to blind the target. I can see this being very handy when we get into things like Grandmaster Nightfalls. If you need to deal with an unstoppable champion, you can also synergize with other artifact mods. As long as you have an armor charge, you can apply that blind. Now, the boost for this one reads that blinding a target in this way instead emits a blinding burst. So instead of slowly blinding the target that you land a precision hit on, you can also blind targets within what seems to be about a three to five meter radius. It's not a very large radius, but blind is very useful for a number of different builds and of course for pure survival. Ability. Now, this artifact mod does synergize really well with the boost from Trace Evidence, which we talked about earlier. And since picking up Ionic Traces will grant armor charge, there is this like self feeding loop here that you could pull off with Red and Burn, which is exactly why there's a tonic which will boost both called Refined Tonic of Amplified Arc. Now, the last thing I want to mention is that this artifact mod allows you to double dip into champion stuns with Divinity. You heard that right, guys. You could stun both Overload Champions with Divinity and you could stun Unstoppable Champions. And normally, Bungie's very much anti-crossover here of exotics. Like they're like, no, you are Ariana's Vow and you can only stun barrier champions. Here though, at least for Divinity's case, it works. Now on to our final column. Here's where we have the big ones. Starting at the top again, we have Brain Freeze. This reads that frozen cabans become surrounded by chilling fall, which slows cabans that aren't already. Now weapons with the Dark Ether Reaper Order trait deal more damage to frozen cabans. Now when I read that, I was holding out hope that this would become essentially like a freezing osseo Struga type thing, but in reality, it can't freeze a whole room. The way this works is that after freezing an enemy or a group of enemies, one of them 
will essentially spawn what is essentially a dust fill grenade near them. Now, this will slow enemies nearby and can freeze them. But for as long as that first dust fills up, no others will spawn. Now, for the increased damage for our Dark Ether Reaper weapons, it turns out to be somewhere around 6%. You can see that here as our base shot is 7,628, and then it jumps up with the perk active to 8,085. Next up is Supernova. The description of this states that picking up a Void Breach causes your next source of Void damage to create a large weakening pulse. Now, as you can see here, it works exactly as described. Once I picked up a Void Breach, I get the Supernova Ready buff, which lasts for 10 seconds. And shooting Coral within that time releases a weakening pulse from him. Now, this weakens Coral and anything caught in it. Now, this artifact perk is really simple, but with things like Facet of Awakening and the new Synergy mod, you'll have a Supernova Ready very often, which of course can feed into things like Power for the Pain, just like Debilitating Wave did for some easy devour. Next, we have Conductive Cosmic Crystal, which says that your Arc abilities, Void abilities, and weapons with the Dark Ether Reaper Origin trait do bonus damage to targets that are affected by a Stasis Debuff. Now, this mod turned out to be fantastic, especially because of its boost, which increases bonus damage to combatants affected by a Stasis Debuff. Now, looking at our numbers, this will increase damage for both the Dark Ether Reaper Origin weapons and abilities, but these two sources of damage benefit differently. At base, our hand cannon here hits for 5,839 against Coral. Then if we have Conductive Cosmic Crystal equipped with no boost and slowed Coral, our hand cannon now hits for 6,307, which is an 8% increase. Now, if we do the same, but with the boost applied, we hit for 6,423 for a maximum increase of 10%. And yes, this does stack with things like Radiance. Now, where Arc and Void abilities are concerned, they benefit slightly less. For instance, the Arc Bolt hits for 27,938 base, then 29,326 with slow apply, which is about a 5% increase. And then finally, 30,164 with the boost, which is an 8% increase. And the kicker, though, is that this perfectly stacks with Facet of Courage, which causes light abilities to deal more damage to dark debuffed enemies. So if you combine this with Conductive Cosmic Crystal, our Arc Bolt hit goes up to 33,180, which is an 18.8% increase. It's definitely worth boosting this one, guys. Now to our final two perks, we have Served Cold, which reads that picking up a Stasis Shard grants you class ability energy. Picking up a Void Breach grants you melee energy. Now there's also no boost here, but the percents you can expect are about 10% energy from each. But the point of this perk is that these pickups normally give you the opposite energies at base. So when you pick up either a Breach or a Stasis Shard with this perk active, you're going to get some class and melee regeneration rather than just one. Now this takes us to our final perk, the one that we were most interested in, Kinetic Impacts. It reads that sustained damage from a powered grenade launcher causes combatants to emit a shockwave that damages nearby combatants. Now this shockwave can stun unstoppable champions. Let me just say guys, this one is a weird one. First up, it takes five shots against a single target from a heavy grenade launcher to spawn the shockwave, which for some GLs is pretty much an entire base magazine. Now the shockwave will pulse one time, dealing two instances of damage. Here at Carl, it was dealing 7,242 each for a whopping 14,484 damage per proc. Now, the shockwave can stun unstoppable champions, but it does feel a little intuitive since it requires you to dump five shots into a very resistant enemy before you can even get the stun. Now, most GLs are going to have to reload by the time the champion is even stunned at this point. Now, here's where things get weird. People have been reporting that this artifact mod isn't working with certain weapon archetypes and exotics, which is kind of true. For instance, Mossy Max put out a tweet that it only works with legendary adaptive GLs, not waveframes, not rapid fires, and no exotics. And even when doing some testing here at the Templar, we had a difficult time getting it to proc with non-legendary GLs. For me though, testing it at Coral, it seems to work fine with a few exceptions. Adaptive GLs worked like normal. Rapid fires and waveframes did as well, with both taking five shots to proc trimmers. I even got some exotics to work. Colony was able to proc it with five shots. Prospector was also able to proc it. And actually, it only took three shots, which I believe is due to the cluster bomb explosives that just got added. Now, in terms of other exotics, though, unfortunately, this does not work with Anarchy, which seems like it would have been the perfect weapon to work with, considering it does damage over time. It also doesn't seem to work with Salvation's Grip, 
We literally sticked Anarchy and would let them tick and it never procced the Shockwave. Even hitting Coral here with five impacts from Anarchy didn't work. And the same goes for Salvation's Grip. And I don't know if it's because Salvation here is laying out Stasis Crystals and it's not actually the shot itself, but I was hoping that the Crystals would count as quote-unquote sustained damage, but that's not the case. And it gets even worse for Salvation's Grip because even if I fired five uncharged shots, it wouldn't proc the Shockwave. Kinetic impacts definitely turned out to be less potent than we expected. From not really much synergy to only proccing and producing one shockwave. I was hoping this mod would bake some raid bosses and be very, very potent and be a defining seasonal artifact mod. Now, at the time of recording this video, Bungie Help actually put out a tweet regarding kinetic impacts. They stated, we are investigating issues with the kinetic impacts artifact mod where it's not working for all heavy grenade launchers. Damage impact is too low and it takes too many hits to activate the effect. So while in its current state, kinetic impacts is extremely underwhelming. Thank God Bungie has noticed it. And hopefully we'll get an update soon, bringing it more in line with our other artifact mods, especially given the fact that it's in our fifth column. These are supposed to be the highest baking artifact mods amongst all the rest, considering you can only choose two in that final column. So guys, once this change goes through, we'll be testing this out again, and hopefully it's as potent as we wished it to be. So guys, that's everything. Those are all of the artifact mods. If we miss anything, let me know in the comments below. Builds are gonna be crazy this season, guys. Even with some of these artifact mods falling short, there's so much synergy here, and the boost is a really cool feature that Bungie has added, and I'm looking forward to including them in our builds. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming in watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right